Hello everybody, in this video we're going to go over Pep 8 errors in more detail. Alright, let's get going. So this is a picture of Guido Van Rossum, creator of Python. He came up with a Pep or Python Enterprise proposal, and in particular the 8th one. So what is Pep 8? Well, they are coding standards that help enforce readable code and clean code. And when you have clean code, you can avoid traps that lead to problems for you. Coding standards are especially good in group projects because they allow you to switch from one programmer to another programmer mostly seamlessly. So here's what you want to do. You want to go to the starter code, link in the description below. Here's the YouTube video. You're going to copy the name of this file, go to your replit, click add file, paste it in, put your name at the end of the file. You're going to copy everything into your file. So this is control A, control C, and then go into your file, control V, click on the show hidden files, edit the replit file, change the entry point, and here you'll add the name of your file. Run it just to make sure this is the file it's looking for. Now you're ready to go. So I ran the file. It looks like a version of Mad Libs. Right away, I'll auto grade it. So three dots, download, click save, and move to my auto grader page. Select the correct lab, drag and drop it in, submit for auto grading. And what I see is I have 10 pep8 errors. I'm going to expand this so you can see it. Let's go back to our code. So here's how you read this. You look at the line, and then you look at the first number. That's the line number of your error. And you look at the second number, and that's the column number of your error. So it's line 20, column 1. Block comment should start with hash space. Mine starts with just a hash. So if I add a space to it, I'll try to re auto grade it. And now I have 1 out of 10 before I had 0. So improvement. All right, let's keep going. I see my next error. The line number is line 21, column is 5. So here's line 21, column 5. It says missing white space around operator. So operators are pluses, minus, divide, times, equals. Python wants spaces around those for readability. So I'll put one in. And while I'm at it, I'll put one in the next pep error, which is on line 22, column 7. It wants a space after the equals. Then I'll go on to the next one, which is line 22, column 12. It says there's a space before the parentheses. So here it is. I'll take out the space. And now let's just check it to see how it's going. All right, so when I run it, I have a 4 out of 10, so it's getting better. All right, next one. It's going to be line 23, column 6. That's right here. Again, it's a white space before the parentheses. So I'll get rid of that. Next one, line 23 again, column 14. Missing white space around the operator. So once again, it wants a space around the operator. I'll fix that one. The next one, line 23, one more time. Another white space around the operator. I'll fix that. All right, so now one more auto grade. We've got a 7 out of 10. Three more errors. Next one's on line 24, column 25. That's right here. It says a trailing white space. So that just means you have an extra space. I'm going to backspace and get rid of it. All right, next one's on line 26. It says indentation is not a multiple of four. So if you look right here, there are one, two spaces. And for maximum readability, you want that to be four spaces. So the best way to do it is to check to be sure first that in your settings, the indent size is four. In this case, it is, but somehow I still have two space indentation. So the best way to do it is to backspace it to the previous line and just hit enter and let Replit pick the indentation by itself. So that right there is four spaces. All right, so the last one, line 27, no new line to end of file. All that means is instead of ending right here, I just need to hit enter at the end of the line. So I will auto grade it now and perfect score. And there's a quick run through a bunch of common pep errors. I can also use this website, pythonchecker.com. Link is in the description below. I'll copy and paste my code in, and you'll see on the left, there's some question marks. If I hover over those, it'll tell me what my pep8 errors are. This website is not quite as strict as the autograders website, but it does show exactly what line that pep8 error is on. Most professionals will use more complicated IDEs, which is short for Integrated Development Environments. So this one right here is called PyCharm. You're going to see that all the pep8 errors are highlighted. As I hover over these squiggly lines, it tells me what the pep8 error is. So what I do is I look for all these squigglies, and then I fix the pep8 errors as I'm writing my code. You may ask why we don't use this in class. We have in the past. The setup is a lot harder to use at home, and it's harder to get help remotely in case you need help remotely. And finally, it doesn't work on Chromebooks. So if you're using a school Chromebook, you don't have this option, and we wanted the course to be accessible to all. Anyway, I hope that makes solving pep8 errors a little bit more clear. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.